WNBC. Fuck it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Right? Live here with It'll Mike. WNBC. How's it going, guys? What's up, dude? All right. I was expecting some Nick Reffin looking background like when we talked to uh, Nick. Yeah, I was, I was trying to make it work. Problem is the whole sunlight thing makes the, <sighs> the yeah. drowns out the colored mm. lights, you know? I'm, I'm pretty close to like newspapering up the windows, but I'm not there yet, so. But I do see the motherfucking scorpion jacket has made an appearance. Yeah, I had, I had, yeah I, I'm, I'm doing the whole <laughs> carrot po- uh, carrot top thing. I have like props for this show, so yes. I'll just slowly the break hammer. them out as we go. Yeah, yeah. no, not no hammer. Some bum's head you stomp in <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> props yeah. props to your props no, you I, had one of those jackets i was like you better be wearing that shit or at least yeah dude i even i have my dude, like shirt yeah, yeah I, it turned wow. into like a True sick fan. joke that just started no it started self-perpetuating because i had like people knew that i had like I liked watching Gosling movies. And so I started getting I all these. About it. Yeah. yeah. And I started getting all these novelty gifts. So like I have like the prayer candle and <laughs> with Gosling it, on it. Dude. Yeah. dude, my, my parents went to <laughs> Ireland. Right. And I'm like, okay, they're going to bring me back something cool. They, they bring me back. <laughs> uh a ryan gosling calendar from ireland like we used to do this shit to each yeah. other like new kids yeah, on the block I, posters so, for birthdays and yeah shit. dude i still have it so um <laughs> it's just spiraled out of control I, I literally have like a shrine in the corner of my room so <laughs> now uh, unfortunately we couldn't pull like we did with the dead poet society and get gosling on here to surprise you sorry well, that'd Someday. be good that's that's for the best probably honestly yeah. he'd probably Wet disconnect yourself. real quick a little weirded out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i break out that calendar he'd disconnect real quick this is the hair <laughs> doll <laughs> <laughs> there. Uh, oh, oh nice perfect dude. Uh, so yeah. well so is drive your favorite movie because no, of gosling no no that drive is how i think i started taking him seriously and, and watching mm. watching his stuff i think that kind of like changed how pretty much everyone felt about him because before that he was just known for like the notebook right and for Lars the and part? the Real Doll, wasn't that? Unless you were yeah. paying attention. You ever <laughs> yeah. see The Believer? That's when I first came to... No, I didn't see that one. I haven't seen that oh, one. Oh, yeah. Bro, right. that's how I knew about him first. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll have to check that out. The Believer, he plays a Jewish neo-Nazi. Really? It's crazy. Self-hating Jew. To a the self-hating extreme. Jew who goes to the point of becoming a skinhead. You it's and, crazy. You, it's you badass, and, dude. You and your Nazi movies, I'm starting to worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um... No, it's compelling though, man. And it was like young Brando type shit. Like, who is this dude? And then he went on to the notebook. You're like, eh, is that yeah. what's going to happen? And then he just started making shit like this. So it's like, yes. Or the nice guys and Blade yeah. Runner. He's, he can do, he's everywhere, man. He's totally. uh, joking aside. I, he, he's, I think, one of the most talented dudes working right now. So, uh, one of the things I used to laugh about him early on, I remember reading an article is that he's from Canada and he was in like the Mickey Mouse Club type shit with like, Oh yeah, Timberlake and uh, what's her name, Christina Aguilera and Britney yep. Spears and all them. But uh, he even said in this article that he had cultivated after Brando, I think, kind of this New York East Coast accent. Yeah, yeah. To the point where now he's like, I just kind of mm-hmm. talk in it, even though it started fake as shit. Yeah, he, he's which which good for him being honest about it. He's yeah, like, yeah, I just, I just made told. this shit up, you know, like it's right. it's just this made up accent but uh, yeah no no well, how many like tom cruise is in his real name and shit right right no well like, i don't know uh, actually Who no i think it? it's i think it's like robert like bob dylan's robert yeah, zimmerman or whatever you know? sounding name <laughs> what yep, is yep. tom cruise's name i want to look this shit up um anyway you guys haven't officially met which is cool no yeah we uh, yeah good to we've to talked like person. twice i think on on online but yeah, yeah. Good, to, good to meet you man the other half of the yeah likewise team. man i love your artwork dude uh, thank incredible. you so much no yeah. thank you and uh big fan of what you guys have been doing i've been watching a bunch of them because uh i mean the dead poet society one i already told jay that's crazy that you guys pulled that off that's that's one of the even if i didn't know you guys I, that's one of the coolest podcasts i've seen in a, in a long time just i'm still <laughs> pinching myself yeah, yeah. We pulled that off no, his was... middle name is Cruz. Thomas Cruz Mapother. <laughs> Mapother, I remember this. M A P O T H E R the fourth. That's Tom Cruise. Oh, so right. his middle name at least. But but yeah, everybody actors are cultivating a persona and shit. It makes you wonder, like, was a young Jack Nicholson a super badass? Or did he just one day drop acid in college and be like, fuck it, I'm gonna be cool the rest of my <laughs> life, you know? Totally. I mean, it's kind of the same thing, I need, right? I should have done that. <laughs> the same thing. He said. Well, you got to make the yeah. decision, right? <laughs> right, right. But I'm just saying, growing Jay, up, you, was he a Hellraiser? Used, oh, right, 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 right. You used to tell me, Jay, about this guy that used to go to your school, that his name was Fred, and he came back after summer, and he was Rick. 
Yes, like he Frederick. Had, it was Dude, Frederick. Fred. <laughs> That's his name, but he was known as Fred. And when he came back after a summer, he was Rick. And he was and what happened? Though, I think was his older brother like transformed. Came back. It was like a divorce house. So the older brother came back for summer to live with mom, and the older brother coolified him and shit. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I failed you on that front. <laughs> yeah. Take what you can. I think Led about me it, man. Like, like pen names and stuff. I'm always like, do I, you know, do I want to stick with this thing or do I just want to come up with something new or whatever? But, uh, right yeah. Now. It's crazy. Well, what's a good pen come... name to come up with? Nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> something far less honky than our name for sure. <laughs> no, you guys got the, you guys got the good name. That's memorable. We thought about doing Thornton Brothers as like a, like, you know, Thornton Wilder. Right, right, right. Thornton yeah, Brothers, name the Thornton, author. last name Brothers. <laughs> but I don't think people would get it at this point. Whatever, yeah. we do this stupid dumb Thornton shit anyway. Just started as a joke. <laughs> I think started we, as a we, joke. Well, I think we replied to one email okay. with a producer or something as them Thorntons once, <laughs> just because it was such a redneck type script and shit, you know. And we we're talking about casting it and um, them Thorntons up on the mountain. Yeah. You know? <laughs> kind regards them thorntons or whatever and then we we're just like them thorntons and we just kept doing it with them and then started doing it with other people and shit <laughs> it's fu- it's funny what sticks right exactly. like ryan gosling shit that now right. every it, it is funny when people do that though where you get one thing like my wife liked the beatles as a kid yep so now it's very easy just get her something beatles related you don't have to <laughs> right. think yeah. or whatever so now you just keep amassing this ryan gosling shit because other people are lazy emotionally yeah, much lazy. every gift i've gotten for our stepdad is either star trek or uh, right. golf related <laughs> you're the star trek guy you're the fucking ryan gosling guy you're yeah no, goat fucker. It's, it's slowed down a little bit thankfully because i was starting to not run out of space but it's starting to take up too much space i you know I when we get off camera hit me with your address oh, <laughs> I know. So I like, what's your birthday <laughs> i want in on this shit dude uh, uh, life size cardboard cutout I, yeah. I trust you with it because you'd get creative you know I'd, you'd send me something fucked up in a fun way i bet do you have any ryan gosling christmas ornaments yet the ryan gosling tree <laughs> no gosling but but, but the amazing. fact that All i had to faces. think about it is is worrying <laughs> like i i legitimately had to think about it and no i don't not yet not just yet just a stocking in the shape <laughs> of his foot oh geez no it's not plaster caster stock oh, yeah, i was just gonna <laughs> <laughs> right drive uh, <laughs> yes man I've only ever read his name. Is it Nicholas Winding or Winding Refn? Uh, I only know Refn. Even. I only know Refn. That's right. I'm like scared to even say the whole. It's thing. one of those things where I read it and it's like you read it so much, but you never really have to say it. So right. I, Plus I've he's never Danish. It yeah, was... yeah, 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 yeah. I, no, I went Refn. to watch special features on there. I should have, but uh, I feel like they just wrote his name. I think I was watching uh, it before, and it they just, even dodged the bullet. Just <laughs> <into my head. laughs> exactly. They didn't want to ask they me. They're people it. working on it. So, so this so guy Nick. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Directed by Nick. And yep. it might be a v, like a w, the W's of Vending or something, you know, being from that. Exactly. Region. So I don't even know. Who knows, it's dude? Anyway, but, I remember first seeing Bronson at mm-hmm. the Milwaukee International Film Festival in like 09 or some, whenever the fuck it came out, 2010. That shit blew my mind. Bronson's awesome. Bronson's amazing, dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, Refn, he. Yeah. He, it's, you can start. I mean, if you see enough of his stuff, you start to figure out like what his like quirks are, or his kinks or whatever. But yeah, yeah, but but there's a decent amount of variation also from movie to movie. Like like Bronson Ooh, is absolutely. his own beast. I don't even. I'm trying to think like what he's done since. I don't think he's ever kind of gone back to that territory. That's that's no. It was it was it Valhalla? Was that Valhalla Rising, dude? Valhalla that's Rising, what... that's it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Dude, that was that's amazing. I love shit. that movie with, with Mads. Yes, yeah, yes. he loves he loves Mads. But yeah, uh, they started with the Pusher series or whatever, right? And uh, yep. which I remember seeing parts of. I got to go back and watch, revisit that shit. I want to go through all his stuff because I started even seeing like Neon Demon and shit. Those were like those years I got so busy. I've seen that. What's yeah, I haven't TV actually show? seen that one. You haven't? Oh, I haven't seen Neon Demon. No, his, his show oh, I think was Too Old to Die Young. Too Old to Die Young. Did you watch never, that? Yeah, yeah, I watched that. Good? It's uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a hundred percent reffing and it, you can tell that they let him do whatever he wants but uh I, I mean that that show probably has one of the most like 
reprehensible villain speeches I've ever seen in my life. Nice. nice. Yeah, like it's shit. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look it's, at our last. Our it, movie. He's saying this to the guys who made Cactus Jack. I mean, exactly. <laughs> no, for a reason. Because like, if you want to see something that's gonna make your skin crawl, that like, it's at least worth it for that episode. It's like mm. the most disgusting like snuff pornography guy just basically yeah, so I'm I, in. yeah i'm not even gonna say anything more than snuff. that it's just dude it's, i gotta go i'm gonna watch your shit right now <laughs> <laughs> Peace. bring the buzzer early <laughs> <laughs> um i mean fuck it let's talk about drive let's dive in because yeah. okay yeah yeah absolutely for years i've considered it my third favorite after bronson and valhalla rising i felt like is his shit going downhill for me because of that his first movie i love the most Maybe just because it had such an impression on me seeing it in a theater at this film festival when mm-hmm. no one even knew what the fuck it was. And I went out evangelizing it, you know, um, to Valhalla Rising, which that's just some visionary crazy shit no one else would make. Right. To Drive, which I could see other people making, just not the same way. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yep. Um, and then from there, I mean, like I said, I got sick, had a kid and shit, and so I, I think fell off. Gosling oh, only brought him God forgives. Script. Right. From what I read, that it wasn't that Refn had the project. It was actually got, it, they had to replace the director or something. And Gosling br- wanted Refn. He he actually hmm. sought Refn out. Oh, interesting. Like, yeah. The only so that might be why it's so different from his other stuff. Is my <clears throat> point, you know, that or at yeah. least like something that he might not normally, you know, do on his own without having been approached. Well, he's kind of an anomaly, right? Because he'll he'll direct other people's scripts, but he also writes his own stuff sometimes. Because I know mm-hmm. Drive Drive was was written by someone else. And right. right. I that I'm sure that probably plays into. It was a novel, right? I think I yeah, it was, I'm. Yeah, I'm not novel. familiar. That's surprised me. It seems it so made, like made for a movie. That's one of the things story. I was going to ask is if you read the novel. No, no, and I and I'm I'm very curious about. It. I think it. I hope I'm not making something up, but I think the novel had a sequel or it was going to. Mm, I don't know if it did. Let me let me. I should probably check. John Salas, I think, is the guy's name. S A. Yeah, it it had a sequel called Driven that came out in 2012, apparently. Okay, but uh. I remember reading an article that made it seem like Raffin had it and went and courted Gosling because Gosling was talking about Raffin came to pick me up and he drove me around the city at night and, and he was like crying. Start, yeah, he started shit. crying. I think he was yes. on like he, he was on like cold medicine or something. Something and then, he was just talking about the city and how he wanted to shoot it, how beautiful it is, and talking about the themes and the story, I guess. If he I remember like crying, you guys are just like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> driving around crying. Should I be driving and shit? Like if I remember right, like an REO Speedwagon know. song came on and that's what broke him. <laughs> like he started crying because REO Speedwagon was playing. I, I think oh I want to say it was Can't Fight This Feeling. I want I'm pretty sure that's yeah, that's I feel like after I read that article when i stopped being a reffing fan <laughs> yeah it says in wikipedia when gosling signed one for the leading role he was allowed to choose the director and he chose reffin so yes yeah. yeah. who knows man there's so much lore in any of the know. press you yeah. read and uh-huh. i did all my own stunts <laughs> you know, well I, I, would, I would actually probably believe that i think he's i mean he's obviously legitimately likes working with reffin or he did because mm-hmm. he did only god forgives after right which and is then, the other one of his i've seen yeah and if i don't know did you ever see lost river the one gosling directed gosling directed no i think i own it it's in my no, stacks no. and i've been wanting yeah, to watch it for I'm, years but i mean if you watch that remember the can, trailer and yeah, getting, no, like, oh shit, he went reffing in this space. Again. Exactly. So, like, I could definitely, I think, if he had love for reffing, it was probably legit because it's yeah. his mm-hmm. handprints all, or influence Dude. rather is all over Lost River. I want to uh, see Ryan Gosling's was, face the first time he was watching Bronson or Valhalla Rising. Yes. And shit. Like, probably laughing, it was dude. definitely <laughs> It was definitely a good choice for this film to drive because if it were in the hands of just a more just kind of standard director, you know, it mm-hmm. wouldn't have this like mood that it has, you know. Michael Mann could have done it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, been that, sick. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that kind of it's yeah. funny you mention that because I was th- I was like thinking about the movie so I could have, you know, somewhat intelligent discourse and and uh I, I would consider like heat drive and thief to be like, mm-hmm. like a mm-hmm. perfect triple feature. Trilogy, and they're all yeah. kind of like, they're all that dude that making that decision in a different way. You know, like they all want to mm-hmm. be standoffish about relationships. They all have yeah. like a really iron tight mm-hmm. code. So, yeah. yeah. And, and they all can walk away a, in 30 seconds flat. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. collateral. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there is a, uh, too. Yeah. With, with the anti something, it. yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. it's in the, like the city. I don't. I think they might have all been L.A. All the ones we just mentioned. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Which but, no one can shoot L.A. Like, like, well, these two. I'd say these are the two. Yeah. But Raff yeah. and I feel like he could. The night. Both of them shoot shots, any city. Reffin's, I mean, look at Miami Vice and stuff shit. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think Revan um, just likes lights, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. A lot of Neon depth field and, and Boca and shit. You know. Yep. Yep. I was reading some of the about how they shot this. You know, I forget the cinematographer's name, but uh, they shot on a Ari Alexa. There was that debate: do you mm. do film or digital? Especially back in this era. And mm-hmm. he was like, I went around and did tests. And he said, normally, I have a camera at 800, I guess ISO, essentially, or something. And when you're going around with a digital camera, that's when you start to get noise yeah. at night. It's around 800. He said, with the Ari Alexa, I could push it to 1600 and get sick black. So I was like, fuck it. I'm in. Yep, all in nice. on digital. And it's yeah. like, yeah. Like, so even the Tarantino's out there and shit. Like, yeah, there's some... There's like a romance to film, but yeah, yeah, it's like almost harmonic to do for sure. light, yeah, that you won't yeah. get a digital, but uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at the same time, man, it's like the trade off to me. I'm all about digital, yeah, you can just do so much more with it and, after you and, have it, right? It's evolved over the course of all of our lives, Tarantino's included, you know, that mm-hmm. at the time when you first had this uh, bias against it, it was shitty. You know, it's like MIDI music, too, was like that. You know, it's all it was just like computerized and, you know, but now it's like, you know, indistinguishable from from, you know, analog. It's the the resolutions are higher than human perception, you know, when it comes to bit rates and, you know, uh, resolution, et cetera. Well, some of that becomes a problem, like in uh, speaking of Michael Mann again in Public Enemies, there's scenes where the digital is so saturated essentially in high such high resolution you could see the makeup on johnny depp's face yeah, right you know? it's like that's a problem or <laughs> or like those hobbit movies uh, right too, too much detail yeah, right <laughs> uh, right those, well, those hobbit movies they shot in yes. a frame rate yeah it was like frame rate, something crazy is like 200 like, right something right i, I think the whole movie something. was like 60 maybe they amped up some of the action scenes then to make them even crazier mm-hmm. i thought but, uh, I recently gifted Jay the Friday the Thirteenth box set of yep, the, yep. the franchise, and um, you know it's it's all in you know uh, remastered HD and stuff. And Jay was saying it's almost too high res, like it was uh. <laughs> better when it's all gritty and kind of you know well, you it gets, found it's this creepy. VHS and right, yeah. Like, oh, what is you this? Start, you start to see the strings and the tape, and <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. man. It's kind of like. I want to take it and introduce some grain and scratches and shit into it again. There's something <laughs> cool about that, you know. I don't know if old movies should be remastered to the point where right. they don't feel old I, anymore. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I know. It's well, the thing is, even when you saw it brand off. new back then, it looked like shit right. because the films yeah. were all fucking yeah, even trash. In the, the you know? theater, yeah, it was. Yeah, all that film up grain, all that shit. shit. Yep. That would come in projecting it a lot of times, you know um all right well let's uh, talk about drive yeah. what when you first saw it had you yeah. seen his other movies already or was this your introduction no there's this was my first one i remember like it started getting a little bit of buzz not a lot just enough like it was like you know popping up on my radar a little bit and uh i was like all right i'll i'll, I'll check this out you know people are saying it's like it's like this stylistic thing or whatever and 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 that it, it ended up being one of my favorite theater experiences because like the intro of that movie with with the you know at the end of the heist you get the mm-hmm. the city and because mm-hmm. I, I you know i hate to say it but like i f- you know i could be wrong but i feel like this was kind of right before everyone started having drones so like mm-hmm. when you had those city shots that was still it kind was of like a big fresh. deal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. so oh, you see that sucker for those two dude yeah, yeah and, and they're still the awesome they're shit. still yeah. awesome but like any anyone can do them now and it's more ubiquitous now. yeah, yeah. And, and like you know the soundtrack hits it's like music that you know i had never really had heard before but uh just just the whole like style of that intro. well it is very michael mannish again in that kind of distinctive music yeah that mm-hmm. is kind of throughout the whole thing right yeah. right and then just yeah and then once that happened i'm like all right i'm in like i don't know what's gonna happen from here but you you got me and uh yeah, yeah like yeah, the tangerine really dream shit and this both mm-hmm. have that quality where they play well with neon and lights right. and darkness and shit you know just kinda... yeah and it's like a chicken or the egg thing like you almost wonder like am i thinking this goes well together because they did it or is there something just inherently like mm-hmm. complimentary about i don't know it did i think about that a lot because it's yeah it's like the context has been assigned already so, yeah, yeah but it also it makes sense so much on like a base level of the brain it's definitely influenced yeah. like my sensibilities if i was going to go out and make something it would probably look mm-hmm. to a degree a lot like you know I'd, I'd be hitting the neon yeah i haven't seen that in your artwork a lot just very neon yeah yeah just cool i love lighting dude very i don't i think that, yeah. thank you no i appreciate that 
Have but, you ever uh, fucked with cinematography at all? I mean, it is painting ooh. and light, essentially. I've taken pictures here or there, but, like, that's... I, I don't have... It's not my territory. It's very know? meticulous, though. It's time staking. And, you yeah, know. yeah. I uh, I already have enough enough pursuits <laughs> that I'm not good at enough yet <laughs> to that. start a new one, you know? <laughs> uh, or it's, ones you're too good at to start nah, fucking with something you're not good at? No, nah, no. Nah, yeah. nah, and honestly, like, if I get... If I get uh, interested enough in something i don't really care about fucking up or being bad at it i'll uh i'll try yeah, like, process, yeah dude. yeah and it's fun yeah you got to explore that stuff because what i'm doing now i never would have known i was going to be doing you know 10 years ago five years ago but uh collecting ryan gosling paraphernalia yeah yeah, yeah for better or worse dude i got the <laughs> i have the coloring book over there i got the blade runner license <laughs> oh, plate yeah. you the weirdest thing you got what's your best uh yeah. the shirt is probably the one that gets the most attention <laughs> it's amazing cause, yeah because you like, need to get the shirt tattooed on yourself <laughs> have you colored the coloring book no no i, I don't want i don't want the value to go down you know uh, you don't, it's a collector's item dude, now. no in my mind that increases its value <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> no, true i could <laughs> you are a good artist that's yeah yeah that's well, true when, pays for meals. when you go out to chipotle now you just rip off a page of that ryan gosling <laughs> yeah here's my coupon book uh all right but uh <laughs> all right back to I, gossip, yeah I keep, I keep getting us off the movie i'm sorry dude it's that's all right that's, like i said dog came here to talk about <laughs> inherit the wind and we end up talking about aliens probing people and shit <laughs> um but gosling though movies. yep this the believer was when i first saw him and that's incendiary emotional type shit he's mm-hmm. a cipher in this movie so yeah. what, do you have you always just had a thing for cypher type characters that appeals to you too because this isn't the performance i necessarily see and be like that dude's the man because you haven't seen the range or anything it's great yeah. as stoic but you don't well, know he has i think well first of all to answer your question probably yes only because i feel like if a movie works and the character doesn't have a lot of dialogue or you can't necessarily tell what they're thinking and the movie works then that means that there's there's like a lot of non-verbal shit going on which normally doing everything else right yeah yeah so 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 to that answer yeah like the man with no name you know is a trope for a reason that i'm i tend Mm -hmm. to be a fan of like the and and in a lot of ways this is kind of like that sort of western like this this like silent force kind of rolls in Mm -hmm. and and tries to you know help the town and to whether it's success or failure you can kind of come up with your own answer to that but uh yeah, no, I I think what it was is that the moments where he does act or he does say something, he makes it hit so hard. Like when when he's uh, at the diner and that dude from like a previous job starts to try to start a conversation with him, and he he yeah. just says to the guy like, "If you say another word, I'm going to kick your teeth down your throat." Yeah, and he right. just says it. He says it calmly. Yeah. That's it's fucking you, terrifying. I never, I didn't even consider this as a Western, but as soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, like it he's is, called yeah. the driver, right? The man with no name, right? And it, yeah. it is very much like it, like it, just that moment you just pointed out. It's in the saloon, you know, get the fuck away from me, whatever, you know, like. And then at the end, he rides really, out of town. And it's you Los know? Angeles, which, you know, like you imagine the uh, West Western yeah. era, well, Los Angeles, and then flash forward, you know, a hundred and something years later. Mm-hmm. And this is the new <laughs> version of that. That's pretty cool yeah no i i the I, steed the cars um, yeah i was thinking of it too yeah i love uh <laughs> one of the best things about anti-heroes in westerns too in mm-hmm. particular like take william money they're not doing these things because they're the right thing to do it's like because they're too macho to talk about their feelings to go to therapy right they go on a killing spree Mm. therapeutically or they want to protect this woman and her child Mm -hmm. because he can then work through what happened to him as a kid and shit and whatever violence he experienced as a kid but it's not truly altruistic it's kind of just his form of therapy is this through this did they get into life. his uh background at much i don't know oh, that's right really such a cipher. Yeah, yeah yeah so no. like when you think about like he's been hardened apparently right mm-hmm. by his behavior so you, you, it makes you think about like what he went through as a kid mm-hmm. and stuff to harden him to, to this degree uh, when yeah. he walked up and oscar isaac was beat to hell and he walked right past him to go yep. to see about the kid yeah, that's, mm-hmm. the, that's the telling shit. That yes, that was amazing. He, yeah. he grew up seeing Oscar violence as a kid. Awesome. I'm gonna go see if the kid is okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I like I was like I said I was really kind of like meditating on the movie a bit so I could have stuff to talk about. And I I think it's 
not to distill it all down. Cause I don't believe that like I'm with you with theme. Like I think theme is great, but I don't think it's fair to reduce anything to like one core, mm-hmm. you know, no, like, oh, several it's, the, yeah. If it's but a good story, the themes theme. emerge, yeah. but I think and it's impossible. It, it, they'll just yeah. emerge if it's, uh, you know, uh, genuine for sure. And, and I think it's impossible to, to look at this movie and not think that like fatherhood is a huge, like current running through mm-hmm. it because like, on a literal level, you have, you know, Oscar Isaac's character that was was a father and Ryan Gosling's kind of trying to help him be a better father, which is kind of an amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well I, no, but like Hilarious. that's I, I'm trying to. Think, well, he's like, childlike, though. That's the thing about the yeah. Gosling character. He's almost like a kid. <laughs> Going through this yeah, story, but know. like he know, like he knows. I would think, yeah, like he, there's opportunities so like, where, where if you know, if, if uh, Carrie Mulligan's character, I, I unfortunately can't remember her name off the top of my head, but uh, Irene, Irene, yeah, that's Irene. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Um, like I'm sure he knows that, like, oh, like if I go and tell her that your ex con husband's back at it again and he's in mm. debt, like I could get what I want, but he doesn't do that. Yeah. He tries and to he help asked him. Her, he used like so- the Socratic method with her, like first asked her questions to see what she knew, what yeah. she, he had told, what, you know, uh, standard had told her. Which yeah. Is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Approach for which is parents. great. And then you find out standard lied, which was great. He's yes. not even in the scene. A great character work on he standard. Was done there. Speaking <laughs> of Chris throughout Oscar Isaac's name for a second. Yeah, that was my thing. Badass. I came away from this movie saying, "Who the fuck was that guy?" Yes, me too. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I wanted his character to stick around longer. Spoiler yeah. alert! But I mean, yeah, yeah, Isaac is the truth. No, for yes. sure. But the thing that's He's crazy amazing. too is is that he doesn't he doesn't hog the the light. He just no shines. And like, do, but that's part. Yeah, of yeah, his, yeah. But like, because I'll I'll rewatch this because now like Oscar Isaac's a big name and stuff, and it's like, oh shit, yeah. that's Oscar Isaac. He's he's like one of those chameleons, you know, like he. Yeah. But he's still way underutilized. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Time he's in it, it's like, well, dude, I'll tell you, like, I I've seen this movie probably ten plus times now, and the the scene when they're robbing the pawn shop, and yeah. they're just you're just waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting for him to come out, and then he does come out, and then there's just that <laughs> loud gunshot, and I know it's coming every time, but somehow it still it still it's gets jumped. me, dude. Yeah. It's still I know it's coming. I don't know, like. I would love to know, like the the craft side of me is like, how did like whoever did this part, fucking knew their shit? Because even after you know it's coming, it still every single time gets me. Mm, and it's, it's the editor, dude. Yeah, props to the editor. On yeah, that or one, the I sound think. design yes. or something. Yeah. Yeah, it just yeah, it goes sure. it goes the timing is perfect. just the enough timing. past the point where you think you're in the clear or like, yeah. you've, and then it hits it and it's devastating because you and like them he, at this point. The other know? shots come and. And then he just takes off with the car and it's on. So it's that's like you don't even have time moment, to breathe. You're like, that's the, the thing is, Ryan Gosling, his character in this mm-hmm. driver, they never knew yep. him, do they? Yes. Nope. Right. No, that's what Chris was Man, saying about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he'd be the like shape. the best jujitsu player because that's just all about staying calm, even when someone's trying to choke mm-hmm. the life out of you. Yes. And his yes. calm when like the two dudes are coming in the room and centered. Shit. It's not yeah. that he's experienced in this stuff because you can see when Oscar Isaac gets shot, that's yeah. the one moment he cracks where he's like out of the car and kind of panics and shit. Like, uh-huh. oh my God, uh-huh. this dude just got capped in front of but me. But that's his, his like, his, more than almost anything else as far as his profession being a driver in both the Hollywood and the criminal mm-hmm. world has to do with that, that he does the just coolness. take everything with a cool, collected, you know, uh, centered, uh, you know. The emotions got battered out of him as a kid. Yes. But it worked in his favor strength. in his career, you know. But, and I love that no, what no. you were pointing out, that you do see moments where it wavers just briefly, you know, which is great. You There's know? a couple scenes you could see when she's talking to him in the car late that there might have been a tear, but it's already starting to dry or something. You know what I mean? When mm-hmm. the light hits mm-hmm. in his face. Mm-hmm. I, I don't actually know if I would agree that he, the emotions were like battered out of him because he, well, I don't think he not ever battered out of him, but they were beaten into like this. A yeah, no, or he, something. I, I would, if I had to bet money, I would a hundred percent say he was abused in some way or he's in like an yeah, abusive household 100%. because, because, and just to go back to the father thing real quick, like like Brian Cranston's character is 100% mm-hmm. a surrogate yeah. father. He even mm-hmm. calls him kid. That's what he yeah, calls him. Yeah. He says, you know, hey, kid, you know this and that. And you can tell that that relationship, that, like th- the driver must know it's not like whatever cut he's giving him for the the stunts that he's doing where he's risking his life and stuff. Like that's not a fair no, commerce. He doesn't even really yeah, need yeah. to be doing it if you're moonlighting it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah. but that's 100% a, a, a surrogate father relationship. And then yeah. the driver with Benicio, it's just like, once I start, once I saw that thread, yeah, I'm like, yeah. there's there's something to, to to that idea. I think I'd be shocked if there wasn't. But uh, absolutely, the, yeah, the, 
hundred percent. The sure. one scene that's kind of like fucked up when I, when I started thinking about it like that is the, uh, when he's in the hold up in that like motel with, uh, Christina Hendricks character and he just, he knows she's lying to him and, and he goes to backhand her. You know, you know what he has is like yeah, yeah. The, the part, and I don't know if this was intentional That's or not. A great scene. It, it is <laughs> because, scene, because yeah. He, yeah, but the thing is, is like if you look at the way they shot that scene, um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's one of the few scenes in the movie that breaks the POV with the driver because you look up at him, and he's mm, he's like coming POV, down at you, like yeah, the, and it almost makes you think like this what? is hmm. like maybe I'm extrapolating too much, but like well, I feel I think like this... during violence you do because when yeah. he's stopping to do well, the elevator, you get yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. view up of him, etc. Well, actually, but yeah, maybe, but. Maybe, Maybe then after watching. But to me, it's just like, man, that feels like like that's a kid like watching, you know, like like there's similar moments. Yeah. Spouse get beat or something, you know? Like that's that's what that felt like is like he's he's I don't know, it's just a weird and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I was like, because I don't know. It, it was just there's something no, about it's that. It's there for sure. Whether yeah. or not it was intended or it's yeah, just, yeah. You it's know, just like there was something un- something un- that was intentionally right. uncomfortable about that scene that I appreciate because like mm-hmm. it's like yeah, this is not necessarily a hero. This is someone that's fucked up, and yeah. Oh, yeah. he's fighting against that. That's what emerges and rises to the surface yeah. when he's stressed out. And, right. Yeah. Like I was saying, the emotions were battered out of him. I, mm-hmm. I mean, they were just buried so deep that right. or and he's done a good job of building armor over them over the years because i think he knows and i can relate to this to some degree that the feelings he feels most powerfully and on the surface are anger Mm -hmm. frustration wrath negative shit so he's bottled it all up because he's like if i'm emotional motherfuckers are gonna get hurt it's the scorpion it's in my nature to hurt those even when it doesn't benefit me i will hurt you that's so, interesting about the scorpion because I wanted to bring the scorpion up because, you know, when I first saw the movie, I saw it kind of superficially is that, you know, he's got it on his back. It's his like totem. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But then later in the movie, they reference, you know, they actually reference the story, the parable of the frog and the scorpion, which is, you know, the the frog can swim across across the water. And he offers the scorpion a ride and the scorpion stings him halfway through and they both drown. He says, why did you do that? And the scorpion says, that's in my nature. I'm a scorpion. Right, right, right. So um, I was reading some trivia about this and stuff, and <clears throat> it kind of turned my thinking on its head a bit there because it, the idea they said was that the scorpion is riding on his back and he's the frog. He's not. Oh, the scorpion. yeah. So I never... He's the driver. He's the one. Well, maybe the scorpion people. represents no the monkey on his back, the baggage, the emotional exactly. baggage. Yeah, so it's not that he's the scorpion, kid. which is your instinct to think. You know, he's carrying mm-hmm. around. It's actually he's carrying the scorpion like the frog did on his and back. And he knows the sting's going to come, wild. but he does it anyways. It's yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the other thing I heard actually uh, about that that I thought was fascinating, um, it might have been ref, and I don't know, because this was years ago. I was doing like a deep dive with every interview I could find and stuff, but... uh he actually mentioned he was going for like superhero iconography, like mm-hmm. the idea of like your your symbol there. So I thought that mm-hmm. that was interesting yeah. because they could work on multiple levels too. No, for know? sure. I love that about ways. I love that about it. Those are yeah. the things I, I wanted to read and, the book and for. And Gosling is a Scorpio too, by the way. I saw. Oh really? That. I, <laughs> I yeah, see. So. You got me beat. I didn't know well, that. Well, get this. Also, <laughs> look I'm Chris. I'm his number one fan. Now you. He's looking up for signs. He's ball. He's mine. One of the films. One of the films. Raffin showed Gosling when he was talking about how he wanted to shoot it was Kenneth Anger's Scorpio Rising. Which is like a motorcycle movie, though, Ooh. not oh uh, that to my list. auto movie. And Gosling pointed that out. He's like, "Why are we watching all this motorcycle shit? This isn't it." He's like, "But the way they fetishize the motorcycle." That's yeah. what we're gonna do. It's about the way, the look ride, how sexual the they shoot it and make the yeah. drive and the you know yeah. Well, I was thinking about that too. That we were talking about you know his past and the armor and you know all that. There's also something to the driving, like the shark who can't stop you know the, if, mm-hmm. as long as he's in motion right yeah. not only driving but in life you know like Stunts i imagine he's the type if he's just sitting at his apartment with nothing to do mm-hmm. not to work on an engine or drive or help somebody or whatever he just goes crazy you have to keep the mind Shark, going. you know yeah, having yeah. to be in motion yeah. you know that's so a very i think good that's point. part of it too is that his therapy is driving mm-hmm. and it is true like I, I live like two and a half miles from work and by design, I've, I don't even own a car. I, mm-hmm. I just Uber around. I, I can, I walk as much as possible. 
Um, and you just, you know, you don't have to deal with all the annoyances of breakdowns and, you know, uh, insurance and filling yeah, the gas yeah, tank yeah. and all that bullshit, you know, it's kind of a dream, but at the same time, I miss driving, watching this movie really made me miss, especially when you had a Z4 cruising. convertible fucking yeah, in California yeah. shit. Yeah. I was kind of doing his thing for a while and it was amazing. I mean, it's yeah. sublime. There's like a weird uh, therapy with driving. I think that yes. especially at night. Yeah. Yeah. No, yes. like, a, a, and no, for sure. Cause like, I'm still kind of not kind of, I am, I'm still like hunkered down lockdown mode over here but like mm-hmm. i, I find it's so good for like my mental health to just get out into a random drive yeah. for whatever yeah. reason and it's yeah. like there's just something about it which do you have gloves do you put on some ryan gosling gloves in your jacket when you I, I, drives at night I, I, I won't i won't wear the jacket because the i actually <laughs> i don't ever wear this i wore it for like one halloween and then it it quickly became apparent where it, it was almost like when Joker became popular, you, you started seeing the people that were like dressing up Too like that. It's like, Ooh, I don't want to contribute to that. Like I already have, like, right. it's yeah, like, but oh, dude, you- it's so old now. It's just dope. I would rock this yeah. shit. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Well, no, it now it's daily now life it's, at this it's point. Died down right. a bit. Yeah. No, it also, it's <laughs> if you don't, I might, <laughs> but, but to answer your yeah. question, honestly, I did have a pair of driving gloves that I lost that I'm, that I'm not thrilled that I lost them because they were actually really comfortable. And it's one of those things. Once you do it, you can kind of understand why. Sounds like someone shaves with a straight razor. And they're like, oh my god! Yeah, yeah there's a real, there's real a nice, weird ritual actually, aspect yeah. to it. You put them on, and it's like, oh, this is okay. This the, is the tactile, the tactile. Yeah. Choke a bitch yeah, sounds great. Over yeah. a bag of money <laughs> in a hotel room. You, you hope no you don't have prints. to, but you know, if you had to, you could. <laughs> actually, you know, there's. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, but I, I got a question for you guys, actually, because it's something that Shoot. I've seen this movie a ton of times, and I think it's the most for me. It's the most ambiguous thing that I always like. I, I walk away from it with a different interpretation. So. Towards like the end when he's he's kind of it's it's burnt earth and he's just going after everyone. What do you, what's your guys take when he puts on the stunt mask to go look into mm. that pizza place before he attacks I'm Nino? Glad you mentioned that actually because that's I mean, to, to me that's one of the more uh, cryptic uh, surface level just the visual. Yeah, sure. Mike Myers uh, yeah, for sure. type. He shit, knew that right? shit was like going to be creepy for sure. Yeah. 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 Reference sometimes to me strikes me as not as intellectual as you'd think. Like, I remember reading the article, too, where he said his directing style, he doesn't storyboard or any of that shit. Oh, He'll I, rock, I walk him... into a room, look around the room and say, I'm going to put the camera here. It's yeah. instinctual and shit, right? I, I put him in like so. the like the David Lynch category of things, which right, I appreciate. So he's not like, intellectualizing. Well, you ever, so see, uh, the uh, you ever see Friedkin's reaction to Reffin's claim that only God from Gives <laughs> is, uh, is a masterpiece? No. <laughs> you got to see this. They're tight, Sorry. though, right? Look look they, look, look aren't they up. really like... They're like buds, though, right? Friedkin and him? I don't know. I thought, I thought they uh, were. Friedkin, Friedkin, I don't know. I don't know their history or anything, but I, I only wanted to throw that out because um, Jay was talking about, like, how he seems like he might be more mm-hmm. an intellectual, you know? Mm-hmm. And Friedkin was not buying it. He it's was like, like no clothes you, know, fuck, shit. you know, like, masterpiece, you fucking kidding me? This is fucking child's play. Like, you have you seen 2001? You know, Friedkin's <laughs> one of those old, like, James Conn oh, yeah. type. Did you ever like, hear Friedkin or- on... Mark Marin, he sounds just like Trump. It's uncanny. Oh, really? <laughs> Freaking yeah, well, talking. It's. Charles I was thinking of uh, no, Toby I never Hooper, heard it. By the way, oh, bro, uh, oh, yeah, it's amazing. And I'm not saying that necessarily. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, every Jay and I, made yeah, masterpiece, masterpiece for one thing is subjective, right? And it all depends on your tastes and all that, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, he's just crusty. As fuck. On, he's just a crusty old fuck. I just <laughs> think it's funny. That's all. Yeah, exactly. No. Um, it's- I, I, I admire but, I admire people that will just say what they feel because it's mm-hmm. it's kind of hard these days. Like, well, here's what know, I was getting at with him not necessarily being more in, instinctual than intellectual. Mm-hmm. We're talking yeah, about the yeah, mask yeah. image in the window, and I think it might have been that'll look fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Like he's painting dolls, mm-hmm. he's you know putting on a runway show. Sometimes it feels like. Right um, yeah. now, I do think he's again he intellectualizes though when he th- he's his preoccupations are fetish and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he was thinking as much what the mask represents that he's yeah uh, it, uh, like what's the question exactly what do we think about the shot I think it looks amazing but well, as far I just, as what like, it if, represents if you had any kind of like because it's a weird moment he didn't need to wear a mask you would think for because he's already well, kind of it, beyond the pale I, I, here's something I'll public. say I I I think when he put it on you know and it's a good utilization of his resources so to speak you know that like he was a hollywood stunt man and he already had worn this mask to look like the actor and he's like oh i can so i actually feel like that was a good utilization but it was underutilized in its payoff in that 
he didn't really use it as a way to hide his identity. It didn't matter mm -hmm. that he was wearing it or not really. Right. You know, right. like he walked up to the door and no one seemed to even notice he was there. Right. I kind of felt like it, 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 there was no point at which mm -hmm. somebody thought he wasn't you know, right. speak to uh, the more driver coming out look cool and putting it in. And, exactly. And that's kind of why yeah. I was asking because it's such yeah. a it's it's the only I don't want to say the only because I'd probably think about it more and double down. But like for a movie that's pretty sensible in its you know its decisions, that's the one thing that's still kind of a question mark in a way yeah, that I, I enjoy. I like that I don't know because the mm -hmm. the thing I started thinking about for a little bit, like the the view I started you know ascribing or prescribing to it is that like this is someone that maybe never felt like they had an identity to protect. Mm -hmm. And now that he has, you know, Irene and the kid, he's like, oh shit, I have stuff that I, I, I want to have an identity. And there's almost a tragedy to that, that, you know, we, we know that he's not going to have that in the end. But uh, I also think there's something to be said for the fact that I look like a scary motherfucker with this thing on and I want to terrify right. the hell yeah, out that's of what I was wondering if it was that, though, yeah. it would have been yeah. great. Well, Mike people, Myers, man. Like, like Chris saying, said, you know, it didn't pay off, though. If well, I, but I don't, like, it's true. I, I, I don't know. I, would, I don't know if I'd say that. I agree with you that that Refn may not have known, but but I also think I, I like that it's kind of like the mood ring of. Well, he's of doing it to the audience. Yeah, he does yeah. it to the audience. You know, yeah. us seeing him in that mask is freakish. But yeah. um, and there's one point where after he drives Nino's car off the road mm -hmm. and he's coming down the hill after him that Nino looks up and it occurred to me, well, he's wearing this mask. I'm sure he knows it's. I, I would imagine, but I was thinking that that whole like complex mm -hmm. equation of like, well, Nino has this long past as a criminal and shit. Do, is he sure who this guy is? Is he like, who the fuck's coming? At? Like someone's coming. I got all these grievances and enemies and shit, you know, the yep. East Coast mob, all that shit, right? Yeah, and actually like, the one time mm -hmm. Nino came to the shop and talked to Cranston Albert Brooks, was Gosling there? Was that a shop? I feel like he was. I don't know. I don't know if Gosling... Interacts with Nino now that you say yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good that question. Point. Yeah, because it was like it was, I think the Nino, the Nino anyway. side of it was like a whoops, exactly. like oh you crossed paths with that's Nino. A good point. That's yeah. Yeah, that's if true. I ever watch it again, I, I'll have to. I want to. So and maybe the novel too happens. explains. I put this mask on because Nino doesn't know what I look like, and I'm yeah, going I'd to like public to place to fuck shit up. And, and maybe there's no mask in the novel. Just a just a quick aside. Right? Yeah, I could see that easily. Can we right. talk about how terrifying, like clean shaven Ron Perlman is for some reason in that movie? Bro, uh, he is, like, dude. It's, I texted it's... him one thing about this movie. I said, "God damn, Ron Perlman has got a fucking head on him." Right? Dude. It's the most. It's like it's the most subtly unsettling thing. Like it's there's. Yeah. I, they must have. Did they do something? Because it like I don't know. I don't know like if they like uh, waxed them up or something or after or right? what. But there, there's that. That's, no, that's, that's just, what he looks. That's he just him, man. No, no, I know. No, Perlman, no and no, uh, I love Ron Perlman, but love it's just something about this mythic sea creatures okay, hellboy shit. that in the combination arcy. with he's like he's slow in this like he's mentally slow in this movie in a way that makes yeah, it scary yeah because he has well, like that oh how about albert brooks too man oh, he was dude. menacing as yep. fuck in this yep with the i smile read that he and... shaved his eyebrows to make himself yeah. seem less oh, I, didn't, I don't think like, i ever noticed gives you that, that slimy feeling Again, without abortion, really but, registering. yeah exactly yeah. no uh yeah less expression and great because was, albert was brooks scary, dude. who is fantastic in like mm -hmm. broadcast news um, mm -hmm. defending your life the muse shit like that it's always the nebbish guy and it's great that he's got some of that yes. i'm like who is this dude is it? and then he says he was a movie producer of like action movies and shit <laughs> he's basically yes. like some yeah brockheimer golden globus type motherfucker or something, he, you know? he, he's like one of those types who is that nebbish type but his reaction to it is to go the other way oh, yeah. like to the extreme and become this monster you know or <laughs> whatever like just, just like I, harvey if he was more i feel like that is still sex, in the character you know? Yes. He's, in a weird yes. way though he's kind of he's kind of the mirror of of the driver but uh because you, you get the impression that he has this code and and he can't he can't veer from it like when he's when he's visiting you know when albert brooks is visiting brian cranston and he's about to kill him he he, he doesn't want to do it you know you get that impression i don't think he really wanted mm -hmm. to kill him yeah i think he was but he has uh, to do it by his own code I don't, I don't even know if it's so much the code as it is the because the the second time watching it the impression mm -hmm. i got was that he was more he stabbing afraid people. well that he was afraid of uh the east coast mob coming after him right that he had to do it because he his hand was forced by their threat you know what i'm Which saying true. not so much a code theme. We keep seeing things now. Death of Stalin. Their code. That he was fear 
of some oppressive motherfucker coming to get you makes you do nasty shit. Yes, because right. I don't think he I don't think he had much of a code, honestly. I feel like he was being driven by the right. code of his, the people who were coming after him because that was the whole thing was that the money belonged to the you know um, the mob and he mm-hmm. was like I can't let and I I can't you know uh, he was accountable to that right no that's totally fair yeah 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 yeah. I guess the biggest contrast would be he he theoretically if what he said was true he gave Brian Cranston a gentle death by oh yeah yeah and And like telling him it's over just it's painless just let it go and then you you look at how the driver dispatch people there's a little bit of a contrast there I would think Mm -hmm. with taking true well here's the thing driver never dispatches uh, someone he likes Right, like, right. He's never put in that position right. where I think he mm-hmm. generally likes Brian Cranston. Yeah, character. yeah, yeah. He's as likable as he's like. This is yeah. unfortunate. I got to kill That's you. That's true. You know, Def- definitely. Driver's just stomping there, yeah. on his stepdad's head. And but shit his in motives. The elevator. We have to. All right, we have to talk about the elevator scene, right? Because yeah, that's yeah, like. Yeah. One of the great kiss scenes ever in a movie. That, that's yes. verbatim what I would say it is yeah. because. If if you have if you have what like a hundred, I want to kick your ass real quick, but just yeah. like <laughs> just <laughs> I'm gonna kiss this well, shit. In case, <laughs> in case I die, real quick, first. I might die yeah. fighting this guy. Right, I'm right. Kiss her before and, I die. And, and like you have a hundred years of cinema behind you, like the kiss has been done a thousand times yeah, plus. Yeah. How say, do you make it should... different? We should talk best kiss scenes, the three of us. Oh, she's. Mm. I I don't mm. know if I'd have enough of knowledge. All right. I would try. Yeah, what? From here to eternity, famous on the beach, Burt mm-hmm. Lancaster. You know they even made fun of it in Top Secret really or some shit. It. One of those spoof movies, or Naked Gun, where they roll into the sand and disappear yeah. or whatever. That's spoofing that. Um, Spider Man upside down kiss with the mask off is a famous one. That that be that one is that's in a... the rain where he first kisses Mary Jane mm, as Spider Man. Yeah. Um, I know that Indiana a Jones bunch, but I just tapping can't. his lips. That's oh, the thing. It might be yes. the best ever. It hurts here. It hurts here. It hurts here. It hurts here. And then hurt. And she kisses each yes. spot. And then he goes. That's just right here. Yeah. That is fire gangster. <laughs> yes. No, it's, um, yeah. I think Witness too had a good one when he first mm. kisses her in the barn when they're dancing to the music in the car and shit. Just because it's so forbidden. It's been a while since I saw that. Yeah, I feel like there's some good comedic ones too where they like are supposed to kiss but they can't force themselves. <laughs> yep. I feel like I can't think of what it is, but just this uh, uh, <laughs> like, I can't bring themselves to do it. Yeah, is there like some Jim Carrey shit or something? I'm sure. Right. Somebody? Yeah, that is in that vein. <laughs> ben Stiller or something. Anyway, this is Will, one of the Will all Farrell. time greats though, because like yeah. you said, it represents this might be it. It might be well, if you're watching mm-hmm. it for the first time, you you don't really well. I don't think anyone could fairly say that they know it's going to go to the degree it goes to. Mm-hmm. You know, with, with the head stomping after this, like yeah, the right. music is so yes. beautiful. The lights are like you have like golden light, the and then money. and then it just <laughs> snaps back to that. Just and then it just it again, almost like it's like the the opposite of the pawn shop killing, where it it you have the audio for too long and it goes on for like almost too long. It's just stomping and stomping and you, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. but and it's perfect. It shows it's the perfect. shit came in. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's you, it, uh, that to me is, is probably the scene that made the movie. Uh, because that, that's, that's a weirdo taking a swing. You know, that's not like yes. you were saying, you were saying it's a story that a lot of directors could probably do. And I agree with you, but that's the kind of shit that you get from from getting yes. a weirdo to make this movie. Yeah, that, that you know I love weirdos, yes. bro. Yeah, I don't know for I'm sure. I don't say that when I say I that. Feel. I don't. I don't mean that as like a negative at all. I mean right. that's mm-hmm. that's the stuff that makes the movie worth it. Because like, yeah. like Michael Mann, not a weirdo. As right. awesome as he is, not a weirdo. Uh, he, there's <laughs> little, little hints here and there. <laughs> I, I, I think he's just. Maniac, I think. But, I think I think he's just so meticulous. He probably like hides some of that shit at the end of his mm. projects. But I think like he's We're he's got some. Yeah. Well, he's, he's just <laughs> he's such a stickler for reality and shit that he doesn't let the right. weirdness creep into the movie mm. as much. He can, you know? has this air of yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very nonsense, disciplined. And he's not you know mm-hmm. as artful, but it's amazing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, shit, mm. Michael oh, Mann's sh- top shelf. Oh, dude, shit. he's yeah, he uh, he's um, got stratosphere. That kiss though. Think of it from her point of view. She has no idea that he saw this dude has a gun, that dudes are even after them necessarily. Oh, right, right. So right, she yeah. just thinks, oh my God. He just, just, he just went off with this oh, random dude. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. It's Terry heartbreaking. Mulligan's an amazing actress, too. Yeah. She is. 
very if, and restrained and yeah yeah, yeah she's if, just so diverse and you know yes no she's she's i think she's like the uns, unsung hero of that movie because uh-huh. like the poor woman like she's just she was trying to make it work with her ex-con husband he gets right. killed she's been with this guy she's been uh, you could make a case that is she 17. going too far with them or whatever oh, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but like she restrains herself in the end like she goes to his you know his welcome home party or whatever and then she probably thinks, you know, oh, well, at least I have a future with this guy. And well, then dude, she's, Oscar yeah. Isaac might be the only dude she's ever been with. Right. It, it makes it sound like it. Yeah, that's yeah, sounds yeah. Very, he like, tells she that story. Kid, yeah, 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 she yeah. was 19, but she was 17. Yeah, she automatic him. That was standard good shit. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. kind of a jackass in prison. Yes. But, yeah. You know, well, that whole dynamic. Stunt driver, badass, kind of coming around. Like, yes. if I was a chick, I'd be all about it. Right. Totally. That dynamic of her falling for the drug. <laughs> right the um her falling for the driver and the ticking clock of standard yes, getting out of prison mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. like yeah because like that that is a, a very tragic like uh thrust to it that she is she's seeing like this possible life with him but she knows that this very powerful oh, yeah. personality that has all this like you know interwoven history with her is going to be coming out of prison of all right, but, right. i don't know if they said what he was there for but i'm sure it was similar to the pawn shop yeah, thing. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. petty crime shit mm-hmm. yeah and so like man that's unfortunate this fucker is coming out of prison and is going yeah. to upset everything the whole apple cart and that scene in the hallway where standard is amazing scene challenging him but moment. on a very like sort of passive aggressive yep, way yep, but, yep. you know a little above that line you know mm-hmm. um yeah that that was the medicine that's well why also great so though because you when know he was killed off i was like damn i i wanted to see that like tension and conflict continue some more you know part of the reason that but seems so great that is because you know standard is in over his head yeah. If he stepped, mm. he, and to the be driver fair, will fuck him up. He, well, he's not even wrong, though, to be fair. Like, that is, as far as oh, Standard yeah. knows, that's his woman yeah. at that time. Like, you're yeah, like, sure. who the fuck are you? You know, what right, are you doing? Right. That's like, fair, a kid, too. That's just, what makes it good, too. Yeah. That so, but he also, he does have this hubris where he thinks he's oh, more of a sure, force to be reckoned sure. with right. and shit than he for is, sure. which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's acting from a place of being threatened, you know, jealousy, that kind of stuff. A sign of weakness, honestly. Right. Mm-hmm. Oscar and then, Isaac is so fucking money, dude. That fucker's eyes. Dude, funny. there's there's not a weak link in this movie. Like that scene where Carrie Mulligan's looking at him during the party, mm-hmm. and it's just like the pushing on her as she yep. watches him hold court and talk about you know coming back. That's just great acting. Yeah, did not say a word. And like, mm-hmm. a, I think mm-hmm. a lesser movie would would have yes, that was amazing with with that elevator scene. You'd, you'd understand like, oh, she's horrified by this guy. She wants nothing to do with him. But this movie doesn't go down that road because at the very end. She's looking at his apartment. She's like kind of hoping, mm. like, are you coming back? Are you in there? Are you okay? And she's right, like, could right. have been, you know. yeah. yeah. And that that's the thing that again takes it's just one of those small touches that like I don't know. The movie is masterfully ambiguous about almost everything as far as I'm true, concerned. True, like true. like you don't know how these people are ticking, but that's how humans work. It's you almost like know. though, is that a happy accident with Raph? And that's what I wonder sometimes. He doesn't tie up loose ends very well, but yeah. it makes it better. Yeah. Well, even if mm-hmm. even if his finger is not a on the pulse of that, flaw, you know, there's enough so. actors and actresses involved that maybe they knew, or even if they don't, you know, fuck it. It's it's fun to. Well, we know what was cut too. Who knows what they the shot? Parts, yeah. Yep. I mean, that could be very artful cutting where we're like, we don't need to say I, shit, and they cut. I, the also, and... I also read that the ending they also shot shot a version where the driver died. Mm-hmm. He bled out and because that almost gives you the feeling that's what's until happening he blinks. Right. It, yeah he until he blinks yeah. yeah no i'm yeah exactly up to that point you think he might just like die and that's it um they shot that version and even did uh, the rumors are they did test focus groups with yeah. him dying mm-hmm. and 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 i have to agree like because the end that had to happen to me is him driving right like him it yes. had to end on him leaving all, all yes, the shit behind and just fucking it. continuing on the, the and that's it you know yeah no for sure i'm curious what the money. sequel novel gets into well, yeah i have no i have no idea that's the one read those motherfuckers now me too Blind i know my list keeps fucking growing and now man. it's insane you need to just do this for a living back to the elevator scene yeah yeah remind me correct me if i'm wrong it closes and that's the last he sees of her 
that's the last time they're together yeah oh yeah it closes yeah between them he rides yeah. uh, you know whatever it's like he yeah. had the kiss she saw what he really was and that was fucking mm. it and that's yep. all you got no resolution for her nothing no you know, it's amazing yeah it's brutal it's brutal i think that's that's why that's why i think it's one of the best kiss scenes because so often a kiss scene represents love and that's it it's it's the it's the Either it's the beginning of love or it's the the climax of love, but normally there's only one emotion tied to it. And with this, it's such a it's such a double edged sword because yeah, it's the goodbye it's, kiss. It's, it's several... the confirmation and theoretically end of love. It's like yes, I loved you, but now mm-hmm. I can't, and that's fucking mm-hmm. brutal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just the it's the Gemini, the duality of man. I'm yeah. a lover, not a fighter. Yeah. No, I'm going to give you the most passionate kiss and then stomp somebody's head fucking 50 times. Like, I am... That, that's the pinnacle of the duality of man and the lover and the fighter. For each sure. Each to their extreme almost, you know? Yes. Because yeah. the, it wasn't even sexual. That's no, true. No, Being right. a lover is just a yes. kiss. It's not, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's more a protector now, kind of role exactly, in his mind, man. you know? Yeah, that it's beyond... That was his all. whole vibe. And that was yeah. the most consummation of their relationship physically was that kiss. Right, but it was everything. It was it was the mm-hmm. next fifty years together in that kiss or whatever. I think he was saying mm-hmm. goodbye. I think he yeah, knew exactly. it. Yeah, because he insane. he's he he does. It's not like he didn't know what he's about to do. You know, it's just he's, yeah. No, it's there's a tragedy there. And and, and to take a really weird left turn, but just because we were talking about his like nonverbal acting and stuff, I think I understand why La La Land gets shit, and 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 it's not everyone's cup of tea. But I will tell you, for me personally. One of one of the most heartbreaking things that I've ever seen in a movie is is at the very. Have you both seen that movie, by the way? No. Okay. Which movie? It? Sorry. La La, La, La Land. Land. I will watch no, the no, show. No, no, I haven't. All right. Well, I haven't I'm, seen it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be vague because I think I think it's I think it's worth watching. But there's there's a bit of nonverbal acting that he does at the end where he just nods and smiles at Emma Stone and it will fucking rip your heart out and he doesn't say a word. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Cause you both haven't seen okay. it, but well, but Emma like, Stone too is a nonverbal actor. Fucking amazing. Yeah, her but dude, yeah. love her. Like for all the criticism that people have about that movie, I don't know how that particular moment, it's just, it's, he nods and smiles, but it'll kill you. It kills me every my time. Blue Valentine dude. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Place Beyond the Pines. Oh, he's, yeah. That's a lot of nonverbal just, shit. Just These looks, characters dude. don't talk much. Right? No, but that's that's his power, is he can say shit with a look. So I'm going to rip the believer and send it to you. I have a DVD. It's out of print. But uh, that's so I'm going to legally purchase that. And then. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah, exactly. You legally purchased it to make up for it. But uh, <laughs> this is what they get for not putting shit online, though. No, oh, yeah, no. You're reading more and more about that stuff. Like as this stuff gets more fragmented with all the streamers, stuff like Dogma. Most Kevin of my favorite Dogma, movies are lost find. on DVD. Yeah. Like Dogma, you can't buy. Like a better it's, Off Dead. Better off we dead. got that coming you up. Can't a... stream Better Off Dead anywhere. <laughs> That's crazy. Come on, get it to fucking gather. It's insane. <laughs> Man, seriously. Um, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> no, Gosling's the shit. You know what I like about Gosling too? When you see him on like press junk and shit, he seems mm-hmm. like the coolest motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Funny, sly, mm-hmm. funny as shit. Um, I love seeing them on those British shows. Yep. There was that one with that fat chick that uh the host chick, or whatever. She's hilarious, dude. I don't <laughs> know who she is, but uh Is that the one was with when he was with Harrison Ford? Yes. Okay. She's right. amazing. But yeah. uh and they were just drinking whiskey and shit and yep. uh Who's that? Oh, dude? yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I think yes, I might have seen it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that fucking British talk show host guy? Graham Norton? Dude, Graham Norton smokes every American talk He's show awesome. host ever. Yeah. He's amazing, dude. Yes. yes. So they go on those shows. Craig Ferguson, like Howard too. Stern. It's all oh, did all I miss Craig Ferguson? Yeah. Go, go ahead, though, Jay. I just Sorry. said they. it's so much less corporate, and they, it's almost like Stern, where they come on more loose, the guests, mm-hmm. and they yes. just get a little crazy and shit. They know they're in for that. Yeah, yeah and you get so oh, Well, they give them the full them. time, too. They give them the whole block. Yeah, it's not just, finish. you don't have yes. five minutes to plug your movie and tell it no goes straight. It's America, silly anecdote. It's like the debates, you know, the yeah. political debates. You get two minutes and all this shit. Like, what a how joke. do you have a conversation like yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Speaking of two minutes, it's probably about oh, yeah. what we right? <laughs> imagine. I don't know. I haven't looked, but we're close. Anything unsaid? Anyone wanted to get in? About the movie or anything else? Plugs? You got anything to talk no, about? I don't right? have anything, no, I don't have anything to plug. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just... Uh... Here's our problem is that we probably talk about this movie more than we've talked about any other movie. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, ironic. Usually, yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's not bad, but I'm okay. saying it's... once you feel like you've said everything to say about it, it's hard to segue to some random shit. Yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. Whatever now, and then time's running short. <laughs> All right. No, no, I don't have anything to plug, really. I, 
I just I'll plug Nate's re-entry. If you haven't seen that yet, go check out mm -hmm. Nate Davis's re-entry on YouTube. Again. Yeah, because I was just on that and I, I plugged you guys. So I'll do cross, you know, cross pollination to be there fair. You but yes. uh did you do one with just you on there? I was with you and Jeff. I know. I was wondering. Okay, if you did okay. An oh, you scared one. me, dude. I was like, Chris, you gotta check on Jay. We gotta <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm saying no, you not, in addition no, to not, one just not just not just with me. No, no. A solo no. one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Nate trusts me that much yet. Nate's but, uh, good. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Dude. We just did a uh, session yesterday with yeah, Adam, Adam Barker. Barker. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous of you guys because you guys got to to read the second draft without knowing the first one because. I have a, I have both in my head, so I'm like second guessing how much I like yeah. it, you know. Mm, but no, I think it's okay. great. I think he's got yeah. something. How I think, think that he, it is. Do you think there yeah. was darlings he lost that he should have kept? There was a shit you liked in the first draft more than the second. Uh, Maybe saw, those notes made him go more mainstream than he should have. No, what? I would never give notes like that. You know that I'm not a mainstream. No, no, I'm saying the notes oh, that, that he was given oh. in that session. No, I, 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 no, I actually, I started, I started to. I started to uh, give him shit about something he took out, and then he very rightfully articulated why it made sense for that to be gone. You're alone, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it cool if I start filming now? No, when we get inside. Why are you here? I just thought it was really interesting, you know, that someone hasn't left their basement in six months, not even to use the bathroom. Is that true? Why would I want to go out there? I got everything I need right here. That's what's wrong with most people. They're weak-willed pussies and parasites who buy into that whole it takes a village bullshit. You know how many aliases I've used calling into radio shows? I've had it up to my goddamn gills with the systematic feminization of this country. Aren't we important we want to? Get your own damn show if you think you got that much to say. Yeah. You live in your mom's basement. I can't. What's so special about my loser son? You really do hate your own mother. She's a woman. Why wouldn't I? You know, there's some disconnect there, and, and if I could find it, what is hate? Where does it come from? Where does it go? You want to know what gender you are? Reach down the front of your fucking pants and shoot fucking kite. Black lives matter. Do you call horses slaves? Liberal fucktard. Enough with the parades and the rainbow flags. Dude, this guy's, it's like pure hate, man. I want to see something really fucking cool. This guy is a fucking animal. He's got himself on a leash. Itching to get off that fucking leash, and he's gonna fucking kill some people. You wanna fucking show? No, stop, man, stop! What are we here? Look at me! Look at me! We're gonna help you show him the light. We're gonna change the world. This is Cactus Jack coming to you live from a studio audience. To the man who calls himself Cactus Jack. We have watched as you have rocketed to infamy. And you wonder why these cornered animals lash out. Get the fucking side. And now, we have watched as you have called for literal blood. I know you're out there listening. It's buzzing in your ears, burrowing into your brain. Do it, Jack. You're gonna love this. I pulled that trigger on that motherfucker's head. Your VPN will not shield you. The Darknet will not hide you. You and your kind are finished. You think I'm scared of you? Come and fucking get me! Might I be your neighbor? Neighbor? <laughs>